Greetings. What do you need? I've returned from Merhoyed, sir. How does it look then? I brought them help from the monastery. Brother Nicodemus and Yahanka from Skalitz. Fortunately, Nicodemus was able to cure the disease. Well, at least what he's doing looks promising so far. Thank Christ. Some good news for a change. What about the captive? Did you question him? He was infected too. I see. Did he survive? Fortunately, he survived and I had a chance to question him. What did you find out? He was transporting the false coins to Pribislavitz. He got them from some merchant called Menhart. I don't know him. Neither do I. But I know where the money's handed over. It's not far from Rovna, and this Menhart should be waiting there about now. Excellent, Henry. We mustn't let this opportunity slip through our fingers. You go there and put pressure on this Menhart to tell us what he knows. Don't go yet. There's something I'd like to talk to you about. Good luck, then. You haven't disappointed me. Nothing against Bernard, Robard, or any of those others. But none of them could find out as much as you. At least not without beatings and torture. And that doesn't always work. You're a godsend, lad. Thank you, sir. Now go and find out who's behind everything, and then we'll deal with them. Yes, sir. Sir. What is it? Sometimes I ask myself what, what it all means. Why does God allow such things to happen? All this slaughter and revenge, over and over. It's a hard question. I'm no theologian. But long ago I came to the conclusion that the only thing that makes sense is that it's all a trial. Life is one long series of problems to solve. The more you solve, the better a man you become. I never thought about it that way. Well, just look at the pampered ones who have no concerns in life, like young Lord Capon, for instance. I shudder to think how he will rule when his time comes. Tribulations spawn in life over and over again. We must stand our ground and face them. So, I go to Sasso and solve this one. Hmm? You can rely on me, sir. Good luck, son. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Good God, what a bloody mess. This is valuable. They must have been in a hurry or they'd never have left it behind. Someone was wounded here. It looks like another person dragged him off. Maybe there'll be some tracks. I'm on the right track. Mm. Charcoal burners. Someone must have seen or heard something. I'm honoured that a knight such as you takes an interest in me. What happened at the crossroads? What crossroads? What are you talking about? Enough bullshit. I know you dragged somebody here, so tell me what happened. I don't know nothing, and I haven't seen nothing. If you want to know something about it, just ask Boyar. I don't want nothing to do with it. Who is this Boyar? Boyar cracks the whip around here. You'll recognize him by his red cap. Thank you. May the Lord watch over you.
I hope I can be of help to you, Knight. What do you know about the wagon that's been ambushed at the crossroads? I haven't a clue what you're talking about. Really? Yes. Is that a problem? You're what passes for bristle and gristle round here, are you? Possibly. So listen to me, you hero. If you don't want me to wipe that crooked grin off your face, you'll start talking. Got it? Yeah, right. Because everyone knows charcoal burners are thieves and killers. Well, let me tell you, that's not at all what happened. I'll be glad to hear you out. Let's just get this straight. We didn't ambush anyone. And what were you doing at the crossroads then? We were just passing, and we saw the wagon. So we took the sacks. Just the sacks? What about the trail of bloodstains leading to the camp? I, I was just getting to that. We also found one wounded man. What am I saying, wounded? Um, the fellow was hat like a martyr in some holy picture. He begged us to hide him away. So you have him here somewhere? Is he still alive? The fellow has quite a will to live. I'll give him that. Where is he? We've locked him away, in the shed. There. I want to talk to him. I don't know. He, he paid us. We're not to let anyone near him. We've been through that already. All right, all right. Just calm down. Here, take the key. Thanks. May the Lord watch over you. Are you quite well? Who are you? Never mind that. I've come to help you. Thank God. I thought I'd breathe my last here. Lucky for me, my guardian angel comes bursting through the door. I'm no angel, so you'll have to answer a few questions before you get my help. Ah, oh, well, I knew it wouldn't be that easy. Can I see your wound? Are you a quack? Sort of. Hmm. That's a deep wound to the flank and you're still losing blood. You need to staunch it. Will you help me? I can try. Who is it you work for? 
Who did the wagon belong to? To Menhart. He's some kind of merchant who hired me for protection. But that's all I know. Hmm. And where's this Menhart disappeared off to? No idea. I blacked out after the attack. Only came to my senses once I got here. I don't even know where here is. Who ambushed that wagon? A knight. He's been following us for a while. And where did he go? I don't know. I got a beating, and then I passed out. Do you know what you were carrying in that wagon? <coughs> I never asked Menhart that. <coughs> Tell me more about the night. Where's the coin? What? What coin? I will not repeat the question. I, I don't know about any coin. I swear. Ah, to... dumped. Where are oh. those sacks you took from the wagon? Sacks? They're behind the shed. That's him. That's got to be that knight. Is that all? Did you take anything else? Uh-uh. Oh. Fuck! Stop! Stop right there! It doesn't matter as long as he goes back to the Sasso Inn. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I am at your service, Sir Knight. Are there any problems around here I might be able to help with? Well, it depends what you're willing to do. There was one troublemaker around here not long ago, but we dealt with him. He was selling some relics and he claimed were miraculous, but it was nothing but worthless trinkets. The villagers sent the bloody swindler packing so fast you couldn't see his heels for dust. <laughs> All the way to the Dechko, I believe. I reckon he won't last long there either. That's all I can think of. I'm here looking for a fellow called Elijah from Merhoyed. I know him, but you're most likely to find him in some tap room on the square. He only comes here now and then. Thanks. Have you got a bed for the night? All right. For how long? Just the one night? No problem, but you pay in advance. Here you are. You'll like it here. It's like sleeping on a cloud it is. Where do I go to sleep? On the upper floor of the inn. There are steps up to it outside. Your chamber is the one in the middle. See you later.
You thought you could hide from me? If I were hiding, you would not be talking to me now. No doubt you have many questions. I certainly do. We will talk. Not here, however. The wolves have ears. Let's meet at the pond after sunset. You'll find me waiting by the big willow tree. I'll be there. I will expect you.
So here I am. What do you have to tell me? I brought you here because I did not want to cause an alarm at the tavern. I am very sorry, but you made a mistake coming here alone. And it will be your last. Wait! You wish to make your peace with God? Very well. But be quick. I'm here on the orders of Saradze Kobila. You might want to consider that before you do anything hasty. Kobila, you say? If that is true, it could mean trouble. However, I cannot take the risk of sparing you. So you're going to kill me just like that? It seems the best solution. There are no witnesses. Do you really think I'm that stupid? If I'm not back by morning, my companions will tell the bailiff and they'll report to Ratai. If you are indeed under orders from Kobila. Explain to me what you were doing with the burners of charcoal. I was looking for the counterfeit coins, and I still am. I'd heard those men were transporting them in that wagon. When I saw you with the charcoal burners, I assumed it was they who sent you. No, definitely not. Then we have a common aim. I have also been pursuing the counterfeiters for some time. My name is Ulrich. It is true our meeting has not begun well. But if it is the truth that you are sent by Kobila, then we can assist each other. What do you mean? I found out many things, but there are still questions I cannot answer. And the last man who knew anything is now dead. What man was that? Mainhart, the merchant from Passau. Listen, I will explain everything to you, but first, I need you to do something for me. Oh, really? You will introduce me to a certain person, and I will tell you everything I've learned. Who do you mean? Master Tobias Pfeiffer. If you truly serve Sir Radzik, then you must know him. I think I know who you mean. What do you want him for? I have here a written confession which tells how those forgeries are made. But I do not understand such technical matters. Master Pfeiffer, however... We'll definitely be able to make sense of it. And you'll give it to me, just like that. It seems I have little choice. This is the last lead I have. In the meantime, I will return to Sasso and see what I might learn there. Shouldn't you go with me to see Pfeiffer? No. I must remain in Sassau. I have some uh, loose ends that must be tied. What's your name, anyway? I told you. I am Ulrich. Just Ulrich? It is enough. Because you look like a knight. They seldom have just one name. It is true. I have a horse, armor, a sword and a shield. But there are many ways to acquire such things these days. As I am sure you know. So you're not a knight? I am a trustworthy soldier in the service of a nobleman. That is all you need to know. I'd like to know more, but I have a feeling you won't tell me. Your feeling is correct. Who are you working for? I understand why you wish to know, but this does not mean I am at liberty to tell you. Very well. I shan't beat it out of you. Tell me what you know about the false coins. Do you know, Passau? No. What is it? A city in Bavaria. Passau is a city of trade. All the currencies in Christendom change hands there. I see. And that would include Prague Groschen? Some months ago, counterfeit Groschen were discovered to be circulating there. They are made from copper plated with silver. The puzzle of the man began to investigate and learned that a family of money changers was involved. They were bringing the forged coins in from Bohemia and sending back real ones. My liege lord is allied to the puzzle of the man. So they requested that he deal with the matter. And so he sent you? Yes. He needed a man that he could trust absolutely. 
And what about that wagon? What happened there exactly? I followed Menhard from Paso. I had reason to suspect a connection with Sasso. So they were transporting false Groschen on that wagon? Yes. On their way here, they brought real coin. Groschen, foreigns, francs and the like. But now, the sacks were full of counterfeits. What do you mean about the connection with Sassau? The matter was investigated in Passau, and the executioner extracted information from those who were arrested. They told him that the coins were made in a monastery. What, in the monastery itself? I cannot say. I know only what the Passau scribe wrote down in his reports of the interrogations. Why did you let them get here before attacking? I wanted to discover where they hand over their coins, which I failed to do. Besides, Mainhard had an armed escort, and they kept two busy roads and lodged at inns throughout their journey. Until he came to this godforsaken trek, I cannot guess why he came here, but it was the perfect opportunity to strike. What happened on that track? I ambushed them. I took down two, but that bastard man had cut the horses loose and rode away. What next? While I was chasing Manhard, those charcoal burners came and stole what they could. Before I could catch him, his horse threw him and he broke his neck. So we won't get anything out of him? Unfortunately not. What happened to Menhart? He is dead, of course. I know, but what did he do with his body? I buried it. He was a bastard. But I am not one to leave Christian remains rotting in the woods. I see. And where is his grave? He ran from the wagon uphill along the path to the north. Along the way there is an old ruined cabin. I buried him behind it. And don't think I don't know why you ask. Robbing graves is shameful. That's not it at all. If you say so. Very well. I'll go and see Master Fayfar. Godspeed. I will wait in Sasso at the Wagoners Inn. Yeah.
Fucking come on then. <laughs> Is that the best you can do? Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah. Please come to see us. I'm honored that a knight such as you takes an interest in me. I've got some goods here whose owners might miss them. All right. Let's see what we can do about that. God be with you.
Let's have a word about the price. Well, we can try it. Here. With My word. Thank you kindly. Henry, I'm so glad to see you. Don't you want to do something together again? I can't now. Come back in the evening, will you? Henry, I'm so glad to see you. How about now? Fancy a walk to the town? That sounds wonderful. Everyone says the Broken Wheel Tavern is the fun place to be in the evening. I want you to take me there. Have you ever been to a tavern? Me and my father used to stop at the tavern in the glade when he was taking the flower into town, but he never wanted to take me inside. What do you think, Hal? Shall we go? And just where might that be? Just above the upper gate, a little before you reach Ratai. Well, I don't see why not. But you'll have to try some ale while you're there. I will, I promise. Let's be going then. Go to taverns a lot, do you? <laughs> Sometimes. If I want a proper meal, I have to. You wouldn't want to eat the stuff I cook. <laughs> That's true. I haven't forgotten that bet you made back in Scallops that time. Don't talk about those oat cakes. Fritz's belly heaves at the very mention, even now. And that's where you go to woo wenches, is it? Yeah, naturally. The taverns and baths are where the best ones gather. You lout. There's no need to take it the wrong way. I'm not taking it any way at all. It's all right. I'm only joking. I don't go picking up women in taverns. I prefer a different sort. What sort might that be? All mouth and green eyes. You're such a... <laughs> Come on then. <laughs> so, here we are. <clears throat> should, we, uh, should we order something? Yes, definitely. Uh, <clears throat> service. <laughs> ah, a pair of lovebirds. <laughs> what would you like to order? <clears throat> mm. is, it, uh, is it all right? It's excellent. This ale, there's no better in the province. Mm. You know what? <laughs> what? What are you doing? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> Uh, but, but really? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, come on, be brave. No, I've never... Hand on my hip. I, I, I don't even know how. And off we go. But, but really, <laughs> I, I don't know how. <laughs> You're doing just fine. All right. Oh, it's... All right. It's fine. <laughs> All right. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Not so bad. <laughs> you wore me out. And you said you couldn't dance. How about a dance with a real man? How about you leave me alone and bother someone else? Oh, come on. It's a crime to waste a body like that on a scrawny boy like him. You got tits like a cow in calf. Ah, that's it. I like a woman to fight before I fuck her. <sighs> You'll pay for that, boy. Ow. Ow! The filthy swine.
one. My hero. Does it hurt? Uh, you should worry about the other fella. I'm fine. Ow! Of course you are. That's why you wince every time I touch you. You saw him off, though. He wasn't feeling so playful after you'd finished with him. That tickles. Baby. So, you'll probably be fine. But try to give your hands some rest. Don't go lifting anything too heavy. Thank you. Can I take you home? You never give up. Are you sure you don't need a bit more rest? I can find my own way home. I'll manage those few extra steps. Come on then, hero. I'll give you this. Nights out with you might be painful, but they're never boring. I do my best. <laughs> well, you should go in before Peshek starts fretting.
God be with you, Henry. Henry, I'm glad you came. God bless you. What troubles you? Master Fayfar, I need to speak with you. I found out something about the counterfeit coin. Did you really? Do tell. Close to Rovna, I came across a wagon that was transporting the false coins. Unfortunately, I came too late. The carter and his men were dead. Damn and blast. Do you know who did it? Yes. A certain knight turned up there. Turned out he was also after the forgers. Well, that is indeed unexpected. Tell me, what did he say? His name is Ulrich. He looked like a knight, but he refused to show his master's colours. Ulrich, you say? Hmm. Could be anyone. Can you describe him? An older man with a moustache. But for all his grey hairs, he seemed pretty tough to me. Hmm. Doesn't match anyone I've heard of. But then we don't even know if Ulrich is his real name. I asked him who his liege was, but he refused to tell me. We live in such strange times. In days past, knights would vie with each other to see who could extol their liege's name the loudest. And today, they take assumed names, hide their emblems and sneak around the land like thieves. I got the impression he was hiding his identity because his masters are odds with Sir Radzig. That may well be. As a staunch supporter of the king, Sir Radzig has many enemies. He told me that the fake money was being taken to Passau in exchange for gold coins. Then that real money was being brought back to the Bohemian lands. That would explain why those fakes bear the Passau counter mark. His master is allied with the Passau alderman, and they told him to sort it all out. I wonder who could be behind it all. He gave me these documents to show you. He seemed to think they prove he was telling the truth. 
They're the records of the interrogations in Passau and some other things he said you'd understand better than him. Hmm. Let me see. We, the aldermen of the city of Passau, mm -hmm. interrogation held this day, mm -hmm. put to pen by the quester. The place of origin is a monastery in the land of Bohemia. Hmm. Which certainly confirms my suspicion that something underhand is going on in Sasso. Coin assay report. Copper core coated with amalgam. Ah, but this is interesting. Here's an outlying description of how the forgeries are made. I'll have to study it more closely. We command Herr Ulrich to investigate and let no man stand in his way. This looks like the original safe conduct. It has the seal of the Passau alderman. But they certainly didn't pen this. How do you know? I recognise the hand. It's a Clement of Kaplitz, the high scribe of the Rosenbergs. So what does all this mean? Well, it certainly explains why your night is so mysterious. Anyway, we should be careful. And we shall begin our investigation. The documents show they use silver amalgam for coating copper fakes. That's a lead we can follow. Amal what? Silver amalgam. It's produced from quicksilver in silver. Well, that doesn't sound like something just anyone can get hold of. Hmm. You're quite right. You will go to Sasso at once. Look around the forges in the city. Someone must be working copper for them. I, meanwhile, will take counsel with Sir Radzik and then follow after you. Where shall we meet? At the inn on Sasso Market Square. Take care. The Lord be praised. What brings you to me? See you later. God be with you, Henry. God save, Henry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Want to earn a bit of... Come here. Yeah. How are you, Henry? Yeah.
Yeah. So, what did Master Pfeiffer have to say? I consulted him and we definitely have a starting point. Tell me more. Master Pfeiffer found out they need copper sheets for the core of the coins and quicksilver for the armor... armor... Uh, uh, the other part? I see. Up, they have such materials at the monastery. Exactly. That's why I'm interested in the local forges. Yes, that is good. Yesterday, I heard people from the craftsman's yard by the monastery complaining. They said they could not sleep at night because the blacksmith works all the time till dawn. I see. That's certainly worth asking about. Have you heard anything else? You said they use quicksilver. There is a painter lodging here who is painting the church in Ujits. I heard him complain also. He said that he went to the monastery for quicksilver and it was all gone. Well, that's something to follow up as well. Thanks. Got it for you right here. Oh, the best. Good day. Hey, here we are. I hope I can be of some humble service to you. I hear you've had some problems with the supply of Quicksilver. Problems? I should say so. For the third time this month they've told me they've none. I'm There's hungry. no Quicksilver to be had, they said. And who exactly are you talking about? Who's holding back the goods on you? The monastery overseer, or his assistant, more like. So what did the overseer have to say to you? Nothing. Apparently he doesn't deal in such trifles. Leaves it all to his assistant, the pompous git. What do you need Quicksilver for? I don't. They do. To mix up the red pigment for me. I'm painting the church in Ujits. Can you imagine how stupid those biblical scenes look without red? Not really. Then be glad you can. My eyes are just to imagine it. Surely such valuable material can't just vanish. Where can it be? I wish I knew. Every time I ask for the red paint, there's a different reason why they haven't got the Quicksilver to mix it. Once they said the goods never arrived, and another time that the wagon carrying it was ambushed. Then it went astray somewhere. And you think they're lying? Jesus, what do I know? But it seems pretty strange to me. Three times in a row the same thing goes missing. There's bad luck and then there's something else. That's all I need to know for now. Ah. As you wish. But wouldn't you care to buy something before you go? Or play a game? I really need some money. I've been waiting here a while and my stay's getting expensive. 
Why not? Show me what you have to offer. Can't be with you. My humble greetings. How may I serve you? See you later. God save God you, God be Henry. with you, Henry. I am honoured that a knight such as you takes an interest in me. I am honoured that you should come to me. Do you have any quicksilver in stock? Who's asking? I'm here on behalf of the master fresco painter. He said you sent him away empty-handed three times already. Then I don't have any. That sounds almost as if you don't want to sell it to me. It's not that I don't want to. It's that I can't. Bollocks. Tell me this instant what you've done with the goods. Nothing! And I'd advise you to calm down. We're on hallowed ground. You're a fine one to speak of hallowed ground. A lying thief in monastic robes. What next? A whore dressed as a nun? This is blasphemy! I'll give you blasphemy. I'm sure you know what our Lord did to the money changers in the temple. What, what, what do you mean? You're not going to hurt me, are, are you? Tell me what's going on here and I won't have a reason to. Jesus! But... Uh, I didn't know anything about any counterfeiting. For your sake, I hope that's true. Now tell me what's been going on. I swear, I, I wouldn't normally do anything like that. Get to the point. Uh, they came for me at noon. Directly to the office. The overseer was somewhere on his rounds. Some night, it was. Without a crest. Armed. He called himself Sir Yezhek, and he had a lackey with him called Rapporter, a scruffy fellow with a yellow cape, always whistling he was. They told me they wanted all the quicksilver we order for the monastery. Of course, I told him that wouldn't be possible. And then what, did they threaten you? Uh, not at first. They tried to bribe me, and when I refused, they started threatening... What did they threaten you with? They said they know people in the monastery. 
that they'd have me thrown out and beaten for stealing. And you had been stealing? I mean, before then? You know how it is. I work my fingers to the bone and they pay me a pittance. So they knew about you? Yes, they knew my name, everything. How did you hand it over to them? I take it up the hill behind the monastery here. There's a big tree there with a small chapel underneath. Sometimes Raputa is there waiting for me. If not, I leave it there. Very well. Thank you. May the Lord watch over you. Made of the bones of Saint Thomas. Good day, Henry. Greetings. What do you need? You look different, Master. So as to fit in. I don't want it known that I'm in town. Right. So what have you found out so far? I found out where they get their quicksilver from. You were right, it was the monastery. Hmm. It was the only logical explanation. It changed hands on the hill behind the monastery. Have you been there to have a look around? Not yet. Maybe it would be worth the time. I'll go and see. And have you found out who's behind it? Someone called Rapata. Not much, but it's a start. At least it's not a common name. Listen, Henry, I had another thought on the way here. Those counterfeiters have to have a punch die to make the fake coins. Yes, of course. That's sophisticated work. And there's a man I know who works at the monastery yard, Master Engraver Jerome of Silesia. You don't suppose that he's... No, not that, God forbid. I know him well. He never do anything like that. But he runs an engraving workshop, so he might have heard something. Very well, I'll ask him. But ask with tact. I don't want him getting offended. And I prefer you not to mention me at all. I'll try to think of something. That's all. Take care. Yeah. Yeah.
God save, what can I do for you? How goes the work, Master? Getting there, getting there. You need something, my boy? You've got quite a large workshop, Master. You don't do all the work alone, surely? I'm usually here with my apprentice, Florian. Of course, by simple observation, you'll note that this is not currently the case, and I'm here alone. Which means that either I'm a liar or something out of the ordinary has occurred. Um, I see. I think. So what's happened to Florian? He shares the fate of the pharaohs for today. The fifth scourge of Egypt did smite him. The plague. Or so his message advised me. Jesus Christ, the plague? Do remain calm. I'm quite certain the plague from which Florian is suffering wasn't a judgment from on high. Or if it was, it was a judgment on excessive drinking. I'm told such an ailment can be of truly biblical proportions. What's he like, your apprentice, Florian? I'm afraid that his exuberant youth has taken its toll. He's been acting strangely of late. I fear he has delusions of persecution. I don't really know what you mean, at all. Recently, for example, he told me that someone was following him. And the very next day he bought a padlock from the blacksmith and locked up his chest. As though I would ever sneak into it. In any case, why the interest? Are you looking for him? Something like that. May I ask why? He owes me money. Naturally. Dice or boozing, was it? Pray do tell. Uh, both. Sodom and Gomorrah are too good for the boy. Here you go. I'll dock his wages. Thank you, Master. You're most kind. But I'd rather get it from him myself. If you think he'll have anything to give, please yourself. About your question, you'll find him at home. No doubt feverishly dying. He sleeps in the baker's cellar. Ah, thank you. Does Florian have any enemies? A man such as he certainly owes money at every turn, and the parents of local girls are undoubtedly displeased with his attempts to propagate. However, most recently it was that fury from the baths who accosted him in quite a spectacular rage. A woman from the baths? What did she do? The harpy nearly tore all Florian's hair out. I don't frequently feel sorry for my ne'er-do-well apprentice, but on that occasion I made an exception. Do you have any idea why she did it? She was screaming about some girl, some flighty bath maid, Esther. I would say that Florian had felt the joys of spring and acted accordingly, although one would have thought they'd be used to that sort of thing at the bathhouse. What are you doing here, anyway? You're in an engraver's shop, my boy. We're engraving, of course. Yeah, but engraving what? And what's it used for? Oh, we engrave wood and stone as well as metal. Here in the monastery, it's mostly about decoration. Thank you. I'll leave you to your work. God be with you.
Maybe look. I'd like to uh, order something here. Uh huh. And what do you want? Proper bath. And my clothes need washing. I'm sure you'll be extremely satisfied. Goodbye. I hear you're at odds with Apprentice Florian. At odds? I'll give you at odds. It's that sod's fault they took my Esther. Poor girl. I shudder to think what's become of her. What exactly happened? This man came in wanting a bath, and Esther with it. She doesn't normally offer that kind of service, but I didn't see the harm, so I sent her in to him. And suddenly I hear screams. So I run out, and I see the bastard pulling her out of the tent and shoving her into a boat. I'm sorry they took her, but what exactly has it got to do with Florian? They shouted at me to tell Florian that when he wises up, he'll get the girl back. I assume that Florian knows this, Esther. You know, village girls. They don't get much of a choice. Every other knave has a turnip for a brain. And if they don't, they're relatives. And then some young dandy turns up who writes her little poems. What's the poor girl to do? And this is how it ends. She should have stuck with the turnip heads. Where can I find this Florian? I'd like to ask him a few questions. He works in the engraver's workshop at the monastery craftsman's yard. And if he's not there, he'll be holed up like the rat he is in the cellar he rents from the baker. He's afraid of me, for sure. What did the bailiff make of it? Don't even get me started on that. He's another fine... I won't say what. I told him everything, but he says he won't do nothing about it. How's that then? He wouldn't tell me to my face, of course. But people here don't think much of us. There's some as reckon my Esther deserves what she got. Poor girl. It sounds like you were close to Esther. I loved her like my very own. She came to me as an orphan, like a wolf child she was. I raised her and taught her and gave her a job, and now she's gone. Who knows if she's even alive? Goodbye. Henry, what will it be today? I'll be taking a little more than usual today. That's all for today. Here you are, thanks for everything. Good luck then.
I'm glad to see you. You look quite sprightly for an invalid. What? Who the hell are you? My name's Henry, and I'm making inquiries for Sir Radzig Kobola. And what do you want from me? Straight to the point then. All right. I've been investigating counterfeit money, and the trail led me straight to you. Does the name Rapporteur mean anything to you? Um, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe? Don't bother. I know you know him. You make the punch dies for the counterfeiters. How do you hand them over? Do you know where their workshop is? I can't say anything. I'll deny everything and you've got nothing on me. No evidence, just accusations. It's got something to do with that girl, hasn't it? How do you know? That doesn't matter. No, I, I suppose not. I didn't want to get involved, I swear. Those bastards kidnapped Esther. If I don't cooperate, they'll kill her. Who is Esther? My girl, of course. That scum took her right out of the bathhouse. I'm sorry about that. Me too. Listen, I'll tell you everything, I promise. But only if I know that Esther's safe. What, so I'm to go searching for her in the woods? I know where they're keeping her, but nobody will help me. And what can puny little me do face with those strapping great villains? Very well. I'll bring back your Esther. Really? Yes, but then you have to tell me everything. I will. I swear to God Almighty. Please, just bring her back to me. Nothing else matters. Where are they keeping her? In the Scallets Hills. There are some abandoned cottages around the mines. That's where I saw her last. They took me there when I said they had to let me speak to her. All right. I'll go there and try and think of something. You're my saviour. Don't get your hopes up. Anything could happen. Take care. Thank you.